We have an ideal op-amp circuit. With a 0.5 volt input, we'll find the output voltage and the current through the input resistor. This is a classic op-amp setup. The circuit uses negative feedback, and the input is applied to the inverting terminal, the one with the minus sign. So this is an inverting amplifier. Now, one quick clarification. Don't confuse the voltage source in the diagram with the op-amp's power supply. In reality, op-amps are powered using dual rails, one positive and one negative, but those aren't shown here. The source labeled VS is just the input signal. If inverting amplifiers are new, check the full tutorial in the description. If you know the drill, remember the shortcut. The closed loop gain equals minus the feedback resistance divided by the input resistance. But rather than jumping straight to the shortcut, let's work out the gain step by step. First, let's label the nodes and currents. We'll call the voltage at the inverting input V1. The bottom node is ground, so that's a zero volts. The non-inverting input is tied directly to ground as well, so it's also at zero volts. Now for the branch currents. The current through the input resistor is I1. The tiny currents flowing into the op-amp inputs can be called I2 and I3. And the current through the 25 kiloohm feedback resistor we'll call I4. Now, since this is an ideal op-amp, we can apply the two golden rules that always hold in a negative feedback configuration. Golden rule one, no current flows into the op-amp inputs. That means I2 and I3 are both zero. And if no current enters the op-amp, then the same current that flows through the 10K input resistor must continue through the 25K feedback resistor. So I1 equals I4. That's our first key relationship. Golden rule two, with negative feedback, the op-amp will adjust its output so that the inverting and non-inverting inputs sit at the same voltage. Since the non-inverting input is grounded, both inputs are effectively at zero volts. So V1 equals zero. That's our second relationship. With those two rules in place, we can now calculate the gain. Remember, gain is just the ratio of output voltage to input voltage. Start with the first relationship, I1 equals I4. For I1, the current through the 10 kiloohm input resistor, Ohm's law says it's the voltage across the resistor divided by its resistance. That's Vs minus V1 over 10K. For I4, the current through the 25 kiloohm feedback resistor, it's V1 minus V out over 25K. Since I1 and I4 are equal, we set those two expressions equal to each other. Simplifying gives us a third relationship. From the second golden rule, we know V1 is zero volts. Substituting that in, we find V out equals minus 2.5 times Vs. So the closed loop gain V out over Vs is minus 2.5. Don't worry about the negative sign. It just means the signal is amplified by 2.5 times, but flipped upside down, inverted, as you can see in the graph. As I mentioned earlier, we can get the same result more quickly by dividing the feedback resistance by the input resistance. If you're not asked to derive the gain, it's often easier just to memorize that relationship. Now that we've found the gain, calculating the output voltage is straightforward. With a gain of minus 2.5, the output is simply minus 2.5 times the input. So if the input is 0.5 volts, the output comes out to minus 1.25 volts. For the second part, we need the current through the 10 kiloohm input resistor, I1. Using Ohm's law and remembering that V1 is at 0 volts, the current is just 0 0.5 volts over 10 kiloohms. That works out to 50 microamps. And that's it. We've got the game and the current worked out. This type of problem shows up all the time on exams. You can memorize the shortcut, but it really helps to understand where it comes from. If you enjoyed this breakdown, hit the like button, subscribe, and stick around for more science and engineering videos.